what's up my people I don't have a name for you yet so I'm just gonna call you my people until I can think of a name for you today I want to talk about um, getting lost in the world of astrology so this is a really important video um, it's sort of my astrological disclaimer video because I'm planning on um, putting out a lot more astrology videos in the near future so this is just a disclaimer for everyone Something that's really, really, really important to know about astrology is that astrology is a tool, and that tool can be used properly or it can be used improperly. When the tool is used improperly, it can be detrimental to your growth, and it can be harmful, and it can be toxic. And when that tool is used properly, it can be something that stimulates growth and facilitates expansion. So... Um, in my opinion, the proper way to use astrology is to, first and foremost, learn your personal natal chart in all different perspectives of it, and just understanding yourself, because it's very important to know thyself, first and foremost, and, um, some definite don'ts of astrology, don't um, go so far down the rabbit hole that, and you'll recognize when this is happening, because I remember when I first started learning astrology, and I learned that my south node was in Cancer, I read this stupid thing on the internet that told me that because my south node was in Cancer, that that meant I would never have children, and that if I did have children, I wouldn't be able to properly emotionally nourish them. And I cried for like four hours. <laughs> but let's look at that right there. You're never going to have children. And if you do, you're not going to be able to properly emotionally nurse them. That right there is a contradiction. If I can never have children, then there's no possibility of me having children that I can't properly emotionally nourish, right? So be very, very mindful of your sources of astrology. Don't ever read um, astrological things that aren't written by professional astrologers. So a lot of times um, the things that you'll see like in the backs of magazines and like in the newspapers and stuff, that's just some random person writing that. And I strongly, strongly advise that you do not read those because I found um, after studying astrology for, I think, over five years now, um, a lot of those things, what they're saying is actually the opposite <laughs> of what's going on or what you should be doing. So be very, very mindful. Make sure that your sources for astrology are, are legit, are legitimate, and um, just anybody who... Um, is a professional astrologer or somebody that's been studying for, I would personally say, um, at least five years or more, preferably more, like five to ten years, um, that would be a legitimate astrologer in my opinion. Um, <clears throat> what else do I want to say? Um, yeah, just don't get, oh, uh, never isolate one aspect and make judgments on a person based off of that one thing. This is something that I'm definitely guilty of. Um, a lot of times when we're first learning astrology, well, a lot of people just know about the sun signs. And a person is not just their sun sign. You have to look at the entire natal chart to understand the complexities of the psychology of a person. Um... But a lot of times people just look at the sun signs and they'll say like, oh yeah, I'm a Taurus sun, but you know, I, I read those things on the internet and I just really don't resonate with the energy of Taurus. And it's like, if, if you're a Taurus sun, but all your other planets are in Aries, well then of course you're not going to resonate with the energy of Taurus because you're going to resonate more with the energy of Aries. And that's very common too, that, um... Because, um, like, personal planets like uh, Venus and Mercury often follow the sun very closely. So it's very common that a person will have their sun in one sign, but a lot of their other planets in the sign right next to it, which usually has sort of an opposing energy. 
that'll be that's gonna be another video too I also want to make a video on um, why the signs that are right next to each other are almost more opposite than the signs that are actually opposing each other so that'll be coming up soon so yeah never just um, make a judgment or an assumption about somebody based off of one aspect in their astrology like you know maybe they have a south node in Aries or maybe they, you know, are a Sagittarius sun and you've had a lot of bad experiences with sun and Sagittarius people. But you have to remember that a person is the sum of all of their astrological aspects, not just one thing. And what else do I want to say? Um, be careful which astrologers you listen to, which astrologers you follow. Don't just isolate one aspect. Oh, and never feel limited by your astrology. This is another thing I'm totally guilty of. Um, when I first learned about astrology, I would make excuses for people based on their astrology. Like, oh, well, of, of course you're being a conceited asshole right now. Your Mars is in blah, blah, blah. It's like, <laughs> that's not the way you're supposed to use astrology. Astrology helps us understand people's patterns, but it's not good to use it to help make excuses for people. Um, there's this whole branch of astrology called relocation astrology, and so that's why you should never feel limited by your astrology, is because there's always a way to transcend any negative or challenging aspects that you have in your chart. So um, with relocation astrology, my understanding of it is that um, it's basically the same thing. It's really easy to do as normal astrology. You just, if you were to Google search um, free birth chart, you just enter all of your information as you normally would. And then where it says birthplace, instead of putting the actual place you were born, you put the actual place that you're moving to or the actual place that you're at right now. And you'll notice that your chart, your natal chart, changes slightly. So, for instance, um, I think it was with my personal chart, it's like my, my Venus is in the sixth house natally. But there are certain places in the world that if I moved there, my Venus would be in the fifth house. So I would feel more of a Venus in the fifth house energy in that particular place. So Venus in the 6th house, yeah, that is kind of a, you know, not so positive or challenging aspect to have. But Venus in the 5th house, that's super awesome. Like, that's super fun. All I have to do is move, and I can experience that energy if I want to. Um, going off of that um, topic of relocation astrology, there's also a branch of astrology called astrocartography which is kind of a similar type of astrology. It's where you input your information um, and then they it gives you a map. And on that map, it has different colored lines going through different countries. So for example, I was born on my sun line and I do feel very sun energy. Like I've been a professional actor for five years. I, I feel very creative all the time. I do feel the energy of the sun very, very strongly here. But I also feel the impulse to travel. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm trying to go to my Jupiter line. I'm trying to go to my Venus line. I want to experience other energies too, even though the sun has been great. Um, so yeah, I can definitely say that astrocartography is legit. It is a legitimate astrology to my experience. I, I have found that when I travel to, for instance, I recently traveled to my moon line and I felt the moon's energy very, very, very strongly when I was in that place. I had amazing connections with people and that's what the moon is all about. The moon is all about connecting with people and I felt so connected to the people the the people that I was there with the people that were there it was it was amazing so um definitely check out relocation astrology and astrocartography if you're interested in transcending your own natal chart and then also I wanted to say leave room for god or leave room for source leave room for miracles Whatever word you want to use that resonates with you, um, 
it's like, yes, we have this energetic imprint that we're born with in this dimension, but miracles happen every day. Always remember that. Miracles happen every day, and you sh that's why you should never feel limited by your astrology. You are a god. You are a goddess. Know thyself and know that you are a god. You are a goddess. And the planets do not control you. You control the planets. So thank you so much for watching.